I create bespoke shoes? And I love the idea of making something bespoke because it's completely unique to that person. Those clients that come to me want something really special, really unique and, and totally original for them. So they can choose all the different parts of the shoes. They can choose the fabric for the upper, the heel, the colour, the inside of the shoes, many different aspects of the shoe, creating a really bespoke, special pair of shoes. And because it's bespoke, it means that no one else has that and that person really cherishes those pair of shoes and it's something that they might pass down to their children perhaps and they'll, they'll last a long time. So as a designer I think it's important to not only create something really beautiful and attractive but to have a sustainable, um, intelligent background behind it, making something that's sustainable and it's going to last, it's made from eco-materials, it gives the wearer that extra feeling that they're, they're doing something really good. And I think slow fashion is something that's becoming more and more popular over the years and people are really embracing the fact that they can have something that's made for them, something bespoke, something um, eco-friendly that's going to last time rather than filling their wardrobe with lots of different things that they'll only wear like once or twice. So alongside the bespoke shoes that I make, I also teach people how to make shoes as well. So today we're doing a shoemaking workshop where I'll be showing some students how to actually create their own pair of shoes. So prior to today, I would have sent them pictures of the kimono fabrics and they choose their favourite one, tell me their shoe size and I prepare the components for them ready for the day. So they're faced with their lasts, which are the moulds that they make their shoes around, all their tools and the components and uppers that they'll be using to make their actual shoe. So throughout the day I'll show them all the different processes that I'll go through to create their pair of shoes. When you glue the, the sole, like I say, you're going to do it onto a clean piece of paper and go all the way over. When I was studying um, at London College of Fashion, I was also travelling in Japan and I got lost on my bike one day and came across these little shops that just sell the kimono fabric. So they take a whole kimono apart into several sort of pieces and this is the perfect width for a shoe pattern. So at the time I was working on a project of sustainability and so I filled my suitcase full of fabrics, took them back to London and created some shoes using these. And they were so popular that after I graduated I set up a business and my main ethos was to upcycle these fabrics, making them into something beautiful and functional. Um, I set up the business um, and over the years I've had lots of different customers who wanted all different types of shoes. Um, and some people come to me because they're, they're very conscious of the eco factor and they really want to wear something that they know has been handmade and it's sustainable and they're supporting British designers by, by doing that. So warm up both sides. <laughs> Be careful the first time you wear them. If you the yeah. fabrics that I use are all upcycled vintage Japanese kimono fabrics, but I also use sustainable leathers with my work. I use vegetable tan leathers, so they haven't been treated with anything. Um, it makes them really lovely to work with. I can wet them and mould them and shape them to create the shoes that I make. Um, I also support a lot of British um, craft makers, so the, the heels that I use are all made by different craftspeople within the UK. I think it's important to, to support those makers and keep them going and, and, and using their, their products that they create in a, yeah. a, sort of a sustainable new way. Up here I have some examples of the kimono fabrics that I might use to make a pair of shoes. When I actually buy the fabrics, they're already taken apart. So this could have originally been a sleeve of a kimono fabric. There could have been up to 12 metres in one kimono, so there's a lot of fabric that I can use to make shoes. Some parts are, are better than others, so when I'm actually making the shoes, I have to think about where I'm going to lay the pattern as to what the shoe's going to look like. So if a client really likes this red part, for example, I'll cut the pattern so that that's really shown off over the toe of the shoe. So at the moment I'm working on some techniques to do with the vegetable tan leather that I use. I found out that the very natural ones I can soak in water and then wrap around the last to create the shoes. 
it, it means that the, the shoes that I make, the, the shapes that you can create are really quite interesting. Here's an example with the, the natural leather and then also I've been using the kimono fabric for just little small touches. Hopefully in the future eco fashion will become the norm. There are lots of high street designers making collections that are more sustainable or eco-friendly, making things more aware to, to the general shoppers because some people don't realise where things come from and creating companies such as myself that are quite transparent and clear about where things come from, I think people will generally move towards that direction and be more aware of where things come from and therefore the trend for eco-fashion will extend and hopefully become the norm one day. So I really enjoy the teaching the shoemaking workshops, so I think in the future I'll be concentrating more on different styles that people can be making and really showing them how they can use eco fabrics to make something new and exciting and something that they'll really cherish. I think it's important to pass that on to people. So for the next year or so I'll be concentrating on expanding my workshop and making more different, different styles for people to, to create. <laughs>